Who is more heroic on the field of battle? Is it the banner carrier that rallies the swords and shield? Or is it the soldier with the dull spear and crooked greaves? Would you lead in the vanguard or watch from a distance? The choice is always yours. In the end, history is written by victors, but is felt only by those who live in it. Hello everyone, this is the Holy Hermit and I welcome you all to a new video of mine. Today we'll be looking at a monk build for Diablo 3. This build would be focused on support, monk being the support character in the game. So without further ado, we look at the armor. This build uses a fast weapon on your main hand and also a shield. But please do not mistake intent here. The goal is not to build a tanky build, but to support your friends in the game. Now we look at the skill setup. But before we move on further, I'd like to introduce my friends. Diablo Dodge, Kthang Spy, Knight66. These are all my fellow friends from YouTube and I have the privilege to play this game with them. We make our way from Monster Power 6 and we go up to Monster Power 10 trying to beat elites and mobs in the process. So we now look at our skills, the way this build works that is, the first being way of 100 fist with fists of fury. Every time I'm attacking anyone around me they take 100% additional damage over a set amount of time. That damage is also applied to my friends when they attack them so I'm already giving them a damage boot every time they're attacking the same person as I am. And a complementary skill to the way of 100 fist is sweeping wind with cyclone. I'm hitting them and I'm hitting them fast. Cyclones help me to survive, heal myself in the process. I have earth ally this time giving me more HP and it has also an ability to taunt enemies in a certain way where they end up attacking the ally instead of me and my friends in the game that is. Next up is Penton and Flame. If my allies and myself are in grave danger, I can cast this skill on them. Casting the skill allows them to heal of course, but also cast fear on nearby monsters and mobs, making them run for one and a half seconds. If I time that, with a passive ability, an ability called Guiding Light, if I do cast healing spell on my friends, me and my friends gain about 16% more damage to our attacks. Another useful effect. So we are saving our allies, we are casting fear, giving them room to breathe and we're giving them enough DPS. Can't really ask for more at this moment, right? Next up we have Exploding Palm, with flesh is weak. You hit an enemy, a mob, an elite, whoever you do hit, you end up causing bleeding effect to them. Bleeding effect will deal damage of course, but they will also take additional damage for a set amount of time. Another skill that helps me and my friends to dispatch monsters a lot quickly. The mantra we're using this time is Mantra of Evasion, giving you a base increase in dodge chance, but it also has a nice passive bonus to it when we use the right rune. The rune allows us to take less damage. Every time we do receive a fatal amount of damage, a shield is formed around us and our allies, which reduce damage by 80% for a decent amount of time. Another useful effect and skill for survival when playing on higher monster powers. And the final passive skill we're using right now, a unique choice again, is near death experience. After the new patch, the skill got a buff, and that allows us to heal ourselves. Every time we do receive fatal damage, we are restored back to life, and this effect can occur twice in every 60 seconds. That is a good addition to the game. When your friends are not around you, they're on a dead timer, you can actually survive on your own with the help of this skill. Another great addition to this build. But this was just all about skimming the surface, explaining to you what the skills are. Now we'll go into more details on how to play on higher monster powers. Because quite simply by spamming these skills, it would be hard to survive really. So we move on further. Now we move on further and looking at our group DPS. How does our friend benefit from the skills? We have to time a few skills together to give an additional bonus effect to our friends. First being the way of 100 fist, which allows monster to take additional damage every time you're hitting them. We also have an healing ability, Penton and Flame, but we time that with Guiding Light, our passive skill. When you heal your friends, they will always be on an effect, an increased damage effect for 15 seconds. Now if you look at the cooldown timer of our healing skill, it also is 15 seconds. So in principle, you can always heal your friend after every 15 seconds and give him a continuous boost in DPS for the entirety of the fight. This is where the group gets the DPS from. But DPS is not really a bigger issue. On higher monster powers, the idea is to survive. 
is to do good consistently, not one of those random debts we get. The idea is to do consistently well. So we look at the second part of our build, the survival, the most important aspect for you and your friends. So your personal survival, that's well and easy. I've posted quite a few builds that let you do that, but if you want to play in a group, you want to be the first person in. You want to be the guy who goes first into the heat of the battle, takes all the effects, take all the buffs and debuffs from the enemy and still do well, help your teammates. So with that in mind, of course we're using Cyclone. We need to heal ourselves and Cyclone allows us to do that with Lifesteal. And speaking of Lifesteal, we do need a decent weapon. The higher the attack speed, the better it is for Lifesteal because we'll be attacking a lot faster. Every hit in turn would lead to Life Leech. So that is an important aspect of your own build, your own survival. You can also use the ally, Earth ally. He gives you additional HP every time you're fighting enemies. Another good, quite simply a nice addition to you. Mantra of Evasion also takes your high evasion chance already to over 50% over in my personal case. But nonetheless, even when you're playing, evasion helps you to avoid those normal attacks. A good addition again. But personal survival is not such a big thing. The idea is to also help your friends in whichever way you can. Try your best for the, so that they can survive in the fight. So if you look at my friends who are playing with them, I'm honoured to play with them of course. But our DPS right now is not very high. Only the Demon Hunter possess around 200k DPS. Which is again not very high for a Demon Hunter. A respectable total. And among friends and I, we all have a DPS of around 140k. So the DPS is not high, so we must do something really special with our skills so that we can survive. Of course, if you can afford a high DPS, all of this becomes very easy. So, the survival now. Our friends are surviving through a combination of their own attacks, but you can also play an important part in that process. The first one being your Pentinent Flame. It is a healing skill of course, so you are healing them directly. But when they are surrounded by enemies, if your friends have a low attack speed, they might find it challenging on higher monster powers to survive. You can go up to them and cast Benton and Flame. Monsters would run away in fear. You will heal them and they also gain enough DPS. On the same note, you have Mantra of Evasion. Every time they've taken enough damage, a shield is formed around them that reduces damage taken by them up to 80%. Another great addition if you're trying to be a support character. And the final addition to this build is also Earth Ally. This ally acts as another player in the game. Mobs and monsters will attack him all times and it also has an ability where they will prioritize this attack to him or to you. So he will take all the damage from you giving your friends enough room to breathe. It also gives you a decent amount of HP for your own self as well. So it is another good addition to the game. So I'll round up the whole thing again. The idea of this build is to help your teammates survive, to act as a good support character. It does utilize a shield and as far as shields goes, it also gives you a high amount of critical chance in return. But the goal here is not to tank at all times with the shield. The goal here is to be a support character. We're using shield in this build for only one reason. It helps us to survive for a bit longer. We do lose some DPS. But we give our friends much needed help by choosing a shield. We can survive for a lot longer. That is a reason why we solely choose a shield. So as far as dealing damage goes, we get, get it from Fists of Fury. We also get it from our Guiding Light skill every time we heal someone. When it comes to dispatching enemies, we're Exploding Palm that allows us to mark enemies so that they take more damage over a certain amount of time. Healing comes from Cyclone and with a Lifesteal weapon. Evasion is also added to your build that allows you to survive for a longer amount of time. Earth Ally also does a similar job when it's distracting. This is how you survive in the build. If you're looking at your team and you're trying to help them, use Penton and Flame on them. You'll, help, you'll heal your friends and you'll also scare away all the monsters in the process, giving enough DPS boost. You also give them a bit of evasion rating and there's a chance for them to be protected when they're on low life. Another great addition to the build. This was my video for you, a build that focuses on helping your friends to survive on higher monster power. The build does work indeed very well up to monster power 10. Such as I am, I try to bring new things to you every time. I hope you like this video of mine. A little announcement before I go. I'm sorry I'll be away for a while. I won't be posting any videos for 15 days or so. I'm finally going back home. Haven't been there in a while. But I will be posting content when I return very soon. So I hope you all have a nice day ahead. Thanks ever so much for listening. Take care now. Bye.